Hi there! Welcome back to Scribbles and Ink Stains. My name is Mary and I am super excited about today's video. I am unboxing my ink samples from C. Monet's Ink Swap, which ran at the end of September, and this is my little package from my ink buddy. Thank you so much, Erin. Came really quickly, and I didn't want to open it earlier today until I had time to sit down and film. And uh, I was actually out getting a COVID test because I have been really sick. And so this is a this is a treat. This is celebrating the day I am starting to feel on the mend. Well, let's first take things out. Very nicely wrapped. I've got a little post-it. And a Ziploc bag. So Simone, uh, definitely check her YouTube channel. I'll list it in the car in the description box below. She is one of my favorite inky planner YouTubers. She has a wonderful, wonderful perspective on purchasing and kind of hauling and consuming. And she's also very creative. She has a coffee, which is similar to Patreon, but I'm I usually rotate through my Patreon, who I who I support on Patreon. And just to show my appreciation to Simone, I'm actually headed over there to subscribe to her for a couple months. Usually I pick basically one or two Patreon or coffee creators to support financially every month. And I'm happy to do that. And the loot is always really just so fun, so creative, so individualized, and it's a wonderful way to support YouTube creators. So uh, I will mark her down in her details down in the description, as well as Aaron's, uh, my swap partner. Why don't I slow down some of the things I'm doing to feel better today besides opening this charming little package is I've got some iced coffee with pumpkin spice creamer in it. It's a no sugar creamer. I'm melting a Scentsy Wax Oats and Honey is one of my fall favorites. If you can't get a hold of this and you're interested, send me a private message. I do rep Scentsy and um, I've got a little stash that I always keep on hand of my favorites and um, sometimes I package those together for my clients if they have a scent that they are in love with and can no longer get a hold of. Anywho, um, I love this packaging. I love this little grid washi and the bright magenta pink tissue paper, but I'm just going to rip on into it. Oh my gosh, this is way over and beyond what the ink swap called for. The ink swap was basically send three samples to your partner and you get two partners. You get one partner who you're receiving from and one partner who you're sending to. You fill out a little survey and I really hope this is a success for Simone so she does this again because it, I just find it so much fun to send out happy mail and obviously to uh, receive happy mail. So this is my little bundle. Yay! Oh, I get a real letter. I am so psyched. Look how cute this is. A little paper clip. It looks like an ink bottle paper clip. I've never seen that before. That's really charming. And I'm going to read this in private. It's so charming. Lovely wax seal. Yay! Thank you, Erin. Oh my gosh, lots and lots and lots of washi samples. So gorgeous. Inky themed. I love the kind of dark academia vibe and the October vibe of these washi tapes. This one reminds me of Stranger Things, the little lights that sort of send messages from the upside down. This one's just kind of gravitas, a skull, and books. This one looks like lots of spooky beakers and ink vials. This one is not sure, but very colorful. It looks like books with, yeah, it looks like a bookshelf and it's foiled. So you get the ornamental details on the spine of the book 
in foil if my camera is catching that light. And then a little haunted mansion. So cute. Lots of gridded washies, some colors, kitty cats, super cute kawaii creatures, and some postage stamps. This, again, is so much above and beyond the basics that Simone outlined. All of this that you're seeing is Erin's utter generosity. Please check out her Instagram. Her swatches on Instagram are completely amazing. She did 30 days or 31 days in September and oh cute she made her little glass her own little glassine pouch. I'm going to actually tip this into my journal and use this as a tip in envelope situation. <gasps> Some pet stickers. This one is like a traveler's company notebook. Lots of really cute stickers with kitty cats and cutouts and geometric shapes. So pretty. I can't wait to journal tonight. Again, I'm starting to feel better, so it's like I'm, I feel like my head is just emerging out of a an inky dark pool and I can finally appreciate. So this is the perfect day for these to arrive. Oh, a little coffee. Coffee motif stickers. I love it. Oh, these are the kind of espresso makers we used to use in Italy. I love them. I love the coffee that comes out of them. More coffee tea and scones. More kawaii. <gasps> Look, this is almost what I've got happening here. Fantastic. So cute. Yes to all things pumpkin too. Oh, this is super cute. This is a little penguin with a little baby penguin underneath it. This looks like a seal, another seal. Oh, samples of Tamagawa Tomo River 52 GSM paper. Sample of Sanzen Tomo River paper, 52 grams. This is so wonderful. I don't want to get these out of order. And I'm going to dry my hands really carefully on my clothes because I'm actually really super thrilled with everything. And these samples just send it over the top. Oh my gosh. Yamabuto bank paper. Beautiful. These are all known in the fountain pen planner community. And it looks like two samples of each. So I really don't want to get them mixed up. So many papers to play with. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. I'm slipping these right back in here because I want to put them in my drawer right away and protect them. This is a charming little drawing of, it looks like Yoseka. And it looks like Yoseka paper samples. A dot grid and a grid grid. And these feel like a coated paper. Mm. I imagine I'll read about what some of these samples are in that letter, so I can't wait. A little note card. I am so geeking out over little notepads, so super charming. Look at all these tip-ins I have for my journal. Ghost Hunters, so cute. Reading list, that's perfect. And oh my God, I have to have this. Okay, stickerclub.com. I've heard of them, so I need to, obviously, all of these are stickerclub.com, these big ones, and I need to find out what that's all about because I believe that's a subscription box, this one too. And if that's the case, uh, sign me up because I'm ready for some new subscription boxes. More little pet stickers. Honestly, I don't know the terminology, so please forgive me if I'm doing that wrong or inform me down in the comments. Thank you so much, Erin. That I'm totally, absolutely gobsmacked, blown away by everything you included in this package. And I haven't even gotten to the inks yet. And the inks. Oh my gosh! I do have my sample books. I have a pretty good idea in my, on my questionnaire I filled out that I loved grungy greens and purples. So I feel like that's what we're going to be looking at here. Oh, what a good idea. These look like stickers that reinforce three ring binder paper uh, that you can pick up in regular like office supply stores. That's a great idea. Um, and they look like they fit better than 
what I use, which are these little 0.75 inch labels from Amazon, which run a little bit big. Okay, super cool. I will, I've already learned something super valuable. Okay. And then there are three more. It looks like we have three purples and three greens. I'm so blown away. I don't currently have any of these inks, nor do I have any of these ink brands. So I am really over the top thrilled with this selection. I don't know how she did it. But yeah, let's go ahead and swatch them. I'm going to swatch them in two different books. One is my Tomoe River Paper Hobonichi Notebook, and the other is just on Midori. So I will be using my Kakimori nib and, let's see, just swabs for the samples. And I'm getting ready to re-ink my pens for October now that I feel a little bit better. So actually some of these will be in the running for the month of October. Can you believe we're already on the 7th? I really can't believe it. Okay, off camera here, I have a big, big old container of water. Let's start with the greens. I'm just going to flip to a new page and make sure I'm set up for three greens. Yeah, I'll do that off camera and come back. They don't have color descriptions on the website, but from the swatch that I'm looking at, at least on my monitor, this ink looks like it's kind of a deep bluish forest green with purpley brownish sheen. Oh, look at that, it's so pretty. It will look slightly different, the undertones, on the more yellow Midori paper. That's why I like swatching on both papers. Oh, I can totally see this going in a pen this month, but again, I've got six new inks here, so I shouldn't jump to any kind of decision like that yet at this point. Let's dip my Kakamori pen. So I'm not seeing shimmer, just sheen, which is good. I want um, I want to be confident using inks in my actual kind of utilitarian working fountain pens. So I feel like that's an allusion to kind of the tarnish that you would get on real nickel, the patina. So gorgeous. That is absolutely, that is so much my vibe. That is really, really a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous ink. And I would love to try some bottles from them. So let's do the other Birmingham Pen Company green. This one is Stock Exchange Lich and Watermark. And this one's a little less chromatic, a little more gray green. Let's do, oh, I really picked up a lot on that swab that's gonna go through. Oh, this is more yellow olivey green and I love it. Wow, this is really, this is my, this is my thing. This would look great in my little Kaweco olive sport. I could live with this paper and this ink. What a combo. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous olive. Nice, wet, flowy ink. It has a little bit of sheen. If you can see it developing around the edges here, you'll see more once that dries. I love writing with this Kekamori nib, by the way. I've never met a dip pen nib that comes anywhere close to its legibility or beauty in terms of consistent line and um, not scratchy like most of my dip nibs. I'm loving that. 
I think I'm loving it more on the Midori, which is a slightly warmer paper. But uh, we'll see once everything dries up what we're what we're looking at, and I'll compare them to some of the other greens in my stash. This is Tatcha Samba Midori. Wow, look, it's a little bit more tealy, but again, it looks like it's right up here in that family. These swatches are all completely unique, though. I think that's one of the most absolutely mesmerizing aspects of fountain pen ink is the interplay that you get between the ink, the paper, and your nib or whatever brush, nib, swab material you are using to make your marks. Oh, very pretty. So bright. Oh, it starts out so like vibrant blue, but look at it here as it dries, that base layer really settles into a foggy, algae, aquatic green. So nice. Oh my gosh. What a shape shifter this one is. This one definitely is a reddish shade. You'll see that here as the ink develops on the paper. Oh, look how differently they develop on both of these papers. Again, this is the magic of fountain pen ink. This is actually what I really love about it. I think some people might be upset about inconsistencies, but it's like handwriting or any other hand, uh, handmade art or craft. The variation is where the beauty is, in my estimation. Okay. I lost some of my footage there. I apologize. I'm a little foggy in the head still from this, whatever this pestilence is that I'm suffering from. Um, okay, sample from Simone's Ink Swap. And I love how her handle on YouTube is the phonetic spelling of her name. There's nothing not to love there. I knew I would just absolutely adore that ink. Um, and I do, and I'm super happy to have a sample. I'll probably load that whole thing in one of my Twisby, currently empty Twisby pens. I wrote about four of them dry last month. So yeah, it's gonna be a bit of a decision process. I don't know what I'm going to choose. I think maybe I'll load each of these up. We'll see. Okay, let's look at Troublemaker. Fox glove. Oh, this is so pretty. This I know, I remember from Aaron's Instagram. Interesting, in that juicy, juicy swatch, you can see the two components of this pigment, kind of a mauve on one end and kind of a blue on the other. And it combines to this beautiful foxglove color. Oh, you can see them separating here on the page too, more so as it develops on the Midori, but also over here on the Hobonichi. Oh yeah, this is going to be one of those kind of chroma shading, duochrome inks. The colors are complementary. Reds, blues, and purples. Oh, so pretty, oh my God. This is a winner. This I have to see. This is a contender for purchasing the bottle. And I haven't decided yet if I am going to get the Diamine Ink Vent. I feel like I probably will. I need to make up my mind and order that from Yuseka. Pre-order it because it's already showing as sold out on Goulet. And um, I think I want it this year. <laughs> Super pretty. One more, I can't believe I'm on the last one. And don't worry, before I sign off here, I'll show close-ups of all of these inks on the page. All right, this last one is Tatcha Yukio E Naka Murasaki. Another really gorgeous purple. <gasps> Look at that, oh my God. Okay. New favorite? I don't know. 
Decisions, decisions. This is more of a blue leaning, almost ultramarine purple with plenty of magenta undertone. These, this ink swap is really going to help me branch out from kind of my go-to Yoseka Goulet pen as my ink source. Uh, Vaness is now on my radar. Tatcha and certainly the Birmingham Pen Company. Look at how that is developing on the page. Oh my God, Tatcha. Again, a little more, I don't wanna say mundane, but a little more two-dimensional, in my opinion, on the Tomoe River paper than on the Midori. On the Midori, it seems like inks are a little more separated they are a little more vibrant and they're certainly a little warmer so maybe i maybe that's just a subjective thing where i prefer a a slightly warmer vibrancy to my inks that's a possibility all right while i clean my pens i'm going to pause this video allow everything to develop and then i'll be back for a quick little summary and to encourage you all to partake in any kind of ink swap that you can partake in. Okay, so I feel like we are ready for our flip through. Everything is dried and really, really thrilled with all of these samples. Um, I feel really blessed that I got so lucky with my ink swap partner. Um, super generous. And she really took the time to have multiple conversations with me about what I liked. Um, I was able to pop onto her Instagram and sort of interact with some of her content. And I feel like that gave her a good idea of what what I would love. And she was just absolutely a an amazing listener. And out of some of out of just kind of minimal contact with me, she put together a truly amazing collection of inks and journal uh, and lovely stationary journaling supplies. So I am super, super grateful to you, Erin, for all the care and attention that you put into my package. Um, all right, for the rest of you, let's flip through and look at some of these purples compared to what I already have in my stash. Now, I haven't explicitly swatched all of my purples, but I've swatched a few. I swatched, I lost a little bit of footage on some scented inks, but I have about four videos filmed and ready to edit. I just have been under the weather, so I've got a few purples swatched, um, so some things for you to look at by comparison. Uh, the Tatcha Nakamurasaki is really unique in my collection. It is Oh, I haven't even put this name of this ink. That's bad. <coughs> uh, this is the P.W. Ackerman number 15 Vorhoot Violet. It is probably the most similar to this, but yeah, they're all, they're absolutely unique from each other. So I don't feel like any of these inks duplicate anything that I already have in my stash. The Diatramentus Lilac is a little bit similar to the Twisby Royal Purple, but again, different enough. They are, this one is a little redder, a little pinker, and this one is a little bluer. Really, really pretty, pretty purples. I don't have anything like this Troublemaker Foxglove, even if I flip through my blues. Yeah, nothing, nothing akin to that. So pretty, so, so, so gorgeous. And then let's look back here at the greens. I'll try not to ignore the Midori paper. So of the greens in my stack, these are the three that I sampled today. The Tatcha, the Birmingham Pen Company, uh, Lichen Watermark, and the Birmingham Pitted Nickel. Of those, it looks like the Lennon Toolbar Dongding Oolong Tea is a little bit similar to the Birmingham, but again, um, 
Here is the linen toolbar. Here is the Birmingham. They are different enough. And actually, that is sort of, that is absolutely my favorite kind of green. So I don't mind a little bit of that it sort of tiptoes up to a similar color, but is different enough. And these are the other two greens in my sash that I thought the Birmingham might be close to. The Robert Oster Crocodile Green is much more yellow green, much more grass green, and the Roaring Klinger Alt Gold Green is much more yellow olive than this one. This is more of that grungy gray green. As far as the teal Tatcha, again, I don't really have anything like that in my stash, so so pretty. The pitted nickel is absolutely, um, absolutely gorgeous. I can see this October, I feel like with certainty, I will be inking all three of these. And let's see, probably all three of the purples as well. So stick around for that video if you're interested. Let me know what inks you got. If you participated in the ink swap, please do comment below. I would love to come and check out your content either on Instagram or on YouTube or whatever your social media preference is. Um, I really, these are the weeks where we get to show off our goodies and just share that joy with each other for that ink swap goodness. Um, I hope if you didn't participate, you have an opportunity to participate in one coming up. I know the ink vent from Diamine is coming out soon. I believe it ships at the end of October. I will be purchasing that. I'm 99% certain, and it's just the season of ink exploration. So I can't see, I can't wait to see what you all have added to your stashes and what your what the current seasonal faves are. Uh, thank you again if you made it to the end of this video, and I will see you in my next one. Thanks. Ciao.